Kids were latchkey kids back then. Yeah. Remember those days you were just like- Oh, your parents were- They work. just let you out. There's no parents. Yeah. They come home. My mom would come. I was raised by a single mom. She had four kids and worked. So she'd come home at 7.30, 8 o'clock, rush hour traffic, just exhausted. Yeah. And But I'd come home, make my own lunch and often yep. dinner. Yep. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'd make something for my mom, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Home alone all day. All, all day. day. Yep. Yeah. We out on a... the streets. Out on the streets. Nobody knew where you were. There was no cell phones. You just wandered around. Yep. And just hope you didn't die. Yeah. Because every now and then someone would die. Someone yeah, would die kids in a would drunk die. driving accident yes. or something. Every yeah. I think every year in my in uh, my high school there would be a page in the mm-hmm. yearbook for the kid that got killed in a yeah, drunk driving. Yeah, something. So there was always something like that. My friend's sister, my best friend Ian, his sister Claire was in a drunk driving accident where somebody died and half her face was paralyzed still today. She was just, uh, uh, yeah, it was a fucked up, uh, fucked up time. Well, it's just... Know. Those, I mean, the, getting through that though, is like a very unusual education in mm-hmm. in human beings and and development and like why people do the things they do and why they say the things they do and why they're trying out different kinds of behaviors yeah. and you know and and bullies and people who are pacifists and people yeah. who get bullied and you see it ruin their lives mm-hmm. and you know it can ruin your fucking life, man. I've, I've I really feel for people who get bullied because if you get bullied in high school and you just decide that's who I am, I'm just this fucking loser, I'm just going to hide. Mm-hmm. And then you hide in your apartment and you hide in your house and you hide at your job and then like your life is hiding now because somebody fucked with you and somebody- Well, so you were very badly hurt when you yeah. were extremely vulnerable. Exactly. And you're probably hurt because you already were vulnerable. You are re- already were right. uh, unsure of yourself for so it's a million different reasons. Yeah. And so you never really recover from that, I don't think. It's, it's, you so, can. it's part. I mean, it, it doesn't mean it destroys your life, but it's in your life. All, yeah. the things it's, all the things that happen to you that are horrible, like unbelievable, they just stay with you. They just become part of you. You don't yeah. swap it out. You don't, you don't clean it out. It you doesn't don't go away, clean it just it stays out, but in you, you. You can get over it. You can get over it. You can integrate it. Yeah. It can help you understand what's happening to other people. It can help you even understand people that hurt people. Yeah. Like when you get really hurt by people, you have two choices. You can decide to collapse under it and say, I'm too weak to live in this world. Or you can decide to hate them, which is another very corrosive thing. Mm. You can just decide that they are shit. They're not human. Or you can look at them and go, what the fuck did this person right. do this to me? And They've always you, been abused. Yeah, and then you go, okay. And then you get an insight that no people don't get without that kind of yeah. experience. And uh, and then you have a self-reliance because you go, I got through it. I did it. I got through it. Um, I think every extreme experience, bad and good, is food you know it's good it food. has it has the potential for a learning experience yeah yeah potential yeah it's yeah. up to you it's, it's up totally to you when you turn it you. into yeah like uh, all those stories about like me being bullied and thrown around like that's what led me to get into martial arts if it wasn't yeah. for that i probably ne- never would have done it and i never right. would have been the person that i am sure but all that came out of bad feelings like terrible yeah. feel like just moving to town so i was mm-hmm. 14 i just moved there um, I, I lived in Jamaica Plain before that, and then we moved oh, to- Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. Well, how old were you when you moved from there? Uh, we were. I lived in Jamaica Plain for, I guess, a year and a half or so. My parents were like, this is way too dangerous. We got to get yeah, them out of there. Still yeah. probably. <laughs> it was yeah. sketchy. Well, yeah. now it's, I think Jamaica Plain's gentrified now. Oh, yeah. Okay. But um, when I was there, it was not. Mm. Uh, when I was in, um, I guess it was eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade, um, there was a- boy who was in our class who was 17 years old and i was like what the fuck is he doing in class and, and what grade were you seventh grade oh seventh wow or that's eighth. crazy it was crazy <laughs> yeah he had he just kept falling out of yeah. school and he was in there and he started off at the beginning like i'm mm-hmm. just gonna fucking do it this time and uh i remember being in class like i was like a little kid he was like a, an adult so i was like this is crazy mm-hmm. and um he fell off. It just, he, he was in class for a couple of days and then he stopped. And I realized, like, oh, this poor guy. Like, he's never going to catch up. Like, he's fucked because now he feels like a loser and he feels like he's so far behind. He can't yeah. even do it anymore. And so he just dropped out. But it was that kind of a neighborhood. It was, there was a lot of criminals mm-hmm. in my neighborhood. I mean, the other thing is that school makes people feel really shitty in some mm-hmm. ways. 
I I always felt like a loser in school. Me too. I was always in trouble. I was never. I mean, I remember when I was in uh, kindergarten. I was in in first grade. I was in Mexico City. That's where I lived when I was little. And uh, I have this one. I don't remember much about that time, but I remember this one day. We had desks with all work in a a desk that folded down Mm -hmm. and all your papers were in there and you had to keep it organized and keep handing stuff in, but I could never finish anything. So my desk was always like, I couldn't close it. (laughs) And I hated this feeling and the teachers fucking angry Mexican teachers would scream at me. And one day the teacher left us in the room alone, me and some kids for some reason. And I took all the papers and I threw them out the window. I opened the window and I threw all my papers out the window. (laughs) And uh, the kids were like, what? And they started screaming and everybody started throwing papers out the window. It was like fucking Attica. It was just nuts. (laughs) And then there was this pounding at the door and the teacher. And I knew I'm in so much trouble right now. Like I'm in beyond trouble, but it felt so good. It just felt so good to be like in this outside of the box yeah you're not supposed to do that at all but it felt free i felt like a a, some kind of adult or something you know isn't it funny those moments of rebellion like early Mm -hmm. on that really sit with you like it felt so good it like it plants seeds for further rebellion in the future well once you get that feeling you don't you want it again and Mm -hmm. again you know because it takes you out of everything it's like yeah i may never get out of this class i may never finish any of these I might not graduate, I might, you know? Yeah. But I'm right now, I'm throwing all this shit out the window. I'm alive. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It feels good for right now. And it's hard to reconcile that. I think that's a little bit of a comedian's, like, upbringing. Um, And and then you have to start being a, you know, then you have kids and it all goes away. You have kids. 